Hello, I'm Tom Booker, Senior Instructor at Broadway Family Karate. Thank you very much for joining me. This video is over basic empty hand free sparring rules. How to work properly, safely, effectively with a sparring partner. Let's start by going over the allowed target areas. Where you're allowed to touch your partner with your hand strikes, with your kicks. Zachary, could I have you right out here? Sure. Right over there. All right, let's put you right on that square. Firing stance, please. All right. Now, now switch back. There you go. Move toward me a little bit. All right. Now, got a good basic sparring guard here. Now, the allowed target areas are the belt and above, up to about collarbone high, to the body here. The sides of the body here under the arms are also included. The padded portions of the head as well. Sides of the head, brow band of the helmet, and even the padded back of the head if that is presented towards you. Nothing below the belt. The belt itself, say I'm doing a front snap kick, the belt itself is part of the legal target area. So if I put my foot there, that's perfectly acceptable. If all of my foot is below the belt, no, that's too low. We're not striking to the legs. Switch sides for me. Now, nothing to the back, nothing to the back of the neck. Switch again. To the sides of the neck or to the throat. Nothing to the face. Even if your partner is wearing a clear face shield, the face is still not an allowed target. All right, those are our legal target areas. Now let's have a look at what are our allowed skills. What can we use with a partner? Mr. Weaver, can I have you? Sparring stance, if you would. Move in just a little bit. All right. With your hand strikes, the strikes you are allowed to use are the back fist, striking with the back side of the fist. This. The punch here. Right there. That's perfectly acceptable. The ridge hand strike using the inside edge of the hand here like that. Those are all allowed. No knife hands. No hammer fists. We are not playing whack-a-mole with each other. Now, with your kicks, you can use any of the kicks you know, provided you are striking with the part of the foot that is covered by your foot pad or the very bottom of your foot. So, front snap kicks, round kicks, side kicks, inner and outer edge crescent kicks are all allowed. No knee strikes. I am not going to grab my partner and get him with a knee. No elbows either. Those are self-defense techniques. They cannot be properly controlled to use safely with a partner. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. All right. Allowed levels of contact. All right, Miss McConnell, could I have you? Now we've got a couple of options here. For instance, please. When I'm first working with a new partner or a new skill, I'll go no contact. With if I'm using a back fist, I'll come close, but not touch with. Pull it out, pull it back two or three inches away, just here and here. I'll work on my aim, work on my distance, but I'm not going to actually touch with it. Now, once we're comfortable with a new skill, we're working with a partner we know real well, we use what's called controlled contact. I'm going to touch. 
Going to the head, I only use light contact. If my partner's head starts snapping around this way when I strike, I'm hitting them too hard. If I strike and I get a loud smack when I hit them to the head, I'm hitting too hard. This should be a light tap. Your partner came in with your, their head in good condition, they leave with it the same way. Now, to the body, this is a more robust target. We can use more contact here and use it safely. And that's important because to the body, we're going to be using a fair number of kicks as well as hand strikes. Now, how to know when you're making too much contact to the body? If something like this happens, I'm doing a front snap kick, and I knock my partner back a step. That is called body displacement. And that means I just hit them or kicked them too hard, even if they don't say anything about it. Also, if you know, I strike or kick and my partner goes, Ugh! I hit them too hard. So control your contact. Have fun, but control your contact. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Work with your partner. Stay in close enough to reach them. Get a sense for how they move. Move with them. Don't run away from them. Engage with them. Now, let's have a look at how this is going to work in practice. Could I have Mr. Weaver over here? Could I have Zachary over here? Move in a little. All right, face your partner. Can I? Ready? All right, gentlemen, let's start. No contact. Come close, don't touch, you can block. And begin. And move back into center. Let's try to work around each other. Now let's start making controlled contact. Please continue. You're doing well. And stop. Very good. Face your partner. Get in. And shift out, please, gentlemen. All right, Miss McCollum, Miss Blake, move in, please. Face your partner. Get in. Sparring stance. All right, again, let's start. No contact, please. Begin. And contact now, please.
certainly use that jump front kick you were practicing earlier. There you go. Thank you. Have fun. And stop. Face your partner. Yep. And go ahead and shift down. Thank you. And those are just some basic rules for free sparring safely and effectively with your sparring partner. Communicating with your sparring partner is very important. If you feel that they are making a little too much contact, you got to tell them so. Now stop, let them know. Remember, your sparring partner is a fine person. They are not a mind reader. They don't know if you don't tell them. If you want to try something new, again, talk to them about it. Let them, uh, let them know what you have in mind. The communication is an important part of this. Thank you very much for joining us.